I'm Betty Swan, and welcome to our show, Wisdom in the Night, where you get help for the tough decisions in your life. Tonight, I have a great guest who is a singer and worship director. Welcome, Terry Ho. <laughs> this is just great to have you on. Thanks for having me, Betty. I want to know about you. Tell me a little bit about your background, where you're from, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Jakarta, Indonesia, but I'm a Filipino. Uh, my dad was a for in the Foreign Service. He was a diplomat, uh, stayed in the Philippines for a few years, but we basically grew up in New Zealand for like 10 years, and I finally went back to the Philippines, uh, finished my college there, got discovered while singing karaoke. But How'd that happen? <laughs> I was just singing karaoke with one of my friends because, you know, she's a good friend of mine. We love to sing. And uh, How old were you at the time? Straight after college. Okay. It's pretty okay. much straight after college. Okay. And then um, a, a big time producer came and he saw us and we knew he was legitimate because he's that famous. And then he said, I want to put in a girl group together. I want you guys to be a part of it. And we were like, yeah, sure, because he's legit. You and know? you were just singing karaoke. Yeah, just having fun. Crazy, yeah, crazy. I know. Crazy. Um, and then literally within a month, we were just, uh, he brought in another girl. So we were three, yeah. So me and my friend and this new girl. Um, and then we, for a month, we were just doing gigs. So we got kind of used to each other. And then the next month, we were recording already. And then after that month, we released the album, came out with a hit single. The album went silver, gold, platinum, and we had this one hit single. And in the, thing, in the Philippines, when you have one hit song, it propels you in the music industry for years, literally. So How many years? Uh, I, I did it probably for like eight years with a girl group, and then I joined another group, an acoustic group with guys, and that was probably another five years. So, so, so uh, with your girl group, what was the name of it? It was called, first it was called FOJ. First of June, because that's when we were first launched. Okay. Uh, and then we recorded, after doing like one album, we recorded two albums in the United States for European release. So it's like for international release. But we had to change our name uh, the, I, for the reasons of, I guess, appealing more to a bigger audience, you know. Uh, oh, so really? we changed it to Vanna Vanna. Yeah, then after that, I joined an acoustic group called U Turn. So I've had, I've been a part of basically two groups because the girl group was the same, but we just changed our name. So. Now, so with the girl group, did you travel a lot? Yeah, we did. Um, schedules are pretty crazy. We traveled all over the Philippines. It's really the pop star life. You know, the the weekends are busy with talk shows, uh, variety shows. Filipinos are big on variety shows. Then we do mall shows in the afternoon or radio tours, and we do gigs at night, and or we do concerts at night. You know, the whole week we would be part of a noontime show. So our group actually became a household name in the Philippines. So it was crazy, a busy schedule. Um, yeah, traveling, singing, recording. Uh, yeah, it's just nonstop. I bet you loved it though, didn't Loved you? it, loved it. Because I always loved singing and you know, even as a kid I would, you know, uh, sing with my brush. You know, well, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, like how were you mirror, when you did that? Three years old, oh, just singing with my hair brush, imagining there were thousands and thousands of people. You know, every, I think every girl dreams of that. Yeah. I don't know, because <laughs> yours happened. It did. It became a reality. So I was just so blown away at that. And Did you know you had a good voice? Um, No, not really. I didn't. But I loved to sing. That's what I knew. My dad was a singer. I, I was always part of the choirs, the groups, you know, the, the girl group, or, you know, the singing groups and everything. But I, I guess it just became an affirmation when I was finally discovered and I finally had my album. Mm -hmm. I remember I even... Um, when I, my first album came up, I, I, st I put the poster up on mm -hmm. my wall, and mm -hmm. I wasn't Christian then, but I made a prayer, and I said, God, you've given me this gift to sing, and you've given me this career. Please help me, you know, do a good job at it. You know, help me, protect me, guide me, and let me, you know, um, you know, just take care of this, this opportunity that you've given me. A lot of people mm -hmm. pray like that yeah. before they really know how to walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of yeah. people pray. Yes. I think, you know, you just don't know what you're heading into, so you got to cry out to someone, you know, mm -hmm. and in this case, I mm -hmm. cried out to God. And the funny thing was, probably about two weeks after that, I run into my old college buddy, and then he actually um, started sharing me the Word. And he, the Word? Like the Word, what? like the Bible. Oh, like, really? Yeah, and then, and then he said, you know, if you were to die today, how sure are you that you're going to go to heaven? And I'm like, I don't know, but I want to be sure. And so I prayed the salvation prayer, you know, opening my heart to Jesus Christ, receiving Him. And I really think that was an amazing thing because he, I believe that prayer really protected me in the very beginning of my career. You know, because mm. the, the singing industry in the Philippines is bad. It can be crazy. It can be, it can get wild and, and so forth. But thank God, I think God protected me even before I went into that industry. Um, he, my friend introduced me to like a small group in, the, in church. So I, even before I could even go to church because I was so busy, I would be part of a, 
a small group, you know, a connect group, wherein there would be people standing with me, praying with me, um, even guiding me, you know, how, just, just covering me in prayer in a crazy world, like, you know, the entertainment industry. So that what kind of things did you go through in that entertainment world that you were protected from? <laughs> a like really drugs, alcohol? Oh, yeah. Definitely yeah. all those things. Immorality. You know, yes, immorality, all those things. It's it's right there in front of your face, you know. Uh, I had a really strict manager, too, who's really un had an unusual personality, just dealing with different personalities and people. Um, so, yeah, all that, all that you, all that you hear, it, you, that's what you face. Um, and you're young, too. Yeah. Well, how were you then? Uh, I was just fresh out of college, but the thing is, my, my whole family had migrated to New Zealand, so I was all by myself. In the Philippines, yeah. all by yourself. Wow. In the Philippines, because they went to New Zealand, they migrated there. I thank God for my mom who allowed me to pursue my dreams because she was very strict, you know, and very protective. But, uh, you know, God, God got me covered, you know. He had people that I could walk with um, mm -hmm. who, who helped me. And, you know, having God as well be in, by my side, you know, as I, as I did the career was huge. Now, did you uh, go on into this acoustic group mm -hmm. from that? Yes. What was that all about? Did you travel? What was that? Same thing, same thing, same travel. And, you know, God is so good because uh, at that time, I was, you know, the girl thing, the girl pop group was, I was getting annoyed with the, the whole band thing. It was just too noisy for me. And so... Um, I decided I still love to sing, and then I ran into some guys from church, and they had their own acoustic group, and I said, hey, I'm going to join that group. So I joined this group, and lo and behold, acoustic becomes really huge in the Philippines, so that's why. So you were kind of at the crest of the wave two different times, yes, weren't you? yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it was just amazing that I thought, eh, I want to go for something, just chill, and yeah, I did, but then hit big in the Philippines, and then I got another two albums. <laughs> so, and then, yeah, just provision from God, so... Yeah, he wanted me in that industry for a bit longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how long were you with it? That was probably for five years. The, the acoustic group? Yeah. That's a long career. Yeah, it is That's a, long a lot time. longer than maybe the average star has. Yeah, yeah. And I always told It's God, pretty hard to be at the top that long. Yeah, and God's been really faithful and really been good. Um, but I always told God, my prayer was, God, I'm going to be here for as long as you want me to be here. You give the opportunities, I'll do it to the best of my ability, and I'll honor you mm -hmm. with it. So he just kept on giving me those opportunities. Well, what kind of challenges did you encounter in that? Because I know you're saying it was hard. Yeah, it was hard. Well, you know, um, if you're talking about the industry, just again, just the, just the people that I had encountered, you know, just the whole industry. Um, another thing was I think I came into the point where I really didn't want to sing anymore. Um, I mean, you, you can only, you know, when you do gigs, they're just there to enjoy your music, but there's nothing eternal, there's nothing impactful, there's nothing that's life-changing that you could, you know, um, help people with, mm -hmm. you know, or grow with. Um, so I think at that point I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to give up the singing career and just go to New Zealand and be with my family. Um, um, but uh, it so happened that my pastor, um, you know, he said, hey, why don't you go into full-time ministry? And I thought, well, there's no money in full-time ministry, why should I? But Because I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll do full-time ministry when I get married and have a husband. But he said, no, you can do this now. And then, like, I realized, oh, you know, it's it's different for church, you know. Um, and then um, I realized that full-time ministry, and as much as I loved my career, doing full-time ministry was even more joy. I had, it, it, I really began to see, hey, this is changing people's lives. I'm helping, you know, usher God's presence in in services, and they're really encountering God. If I can help in that way, then I'm, I, you know. I'm and were you that. traveling then too with all of that? Uh, not a whole lot. When I did full time ministry, I pretty much stayed, but mm -hmm. I did travel for conferences and things like that mm -hmm. that I would lead mm -hmm. worship for. Well, uh, I, what do you do mm -hmm. when you're when you're in front of the people? Yes. And maybe the crowd is small, or maybe you don't feel great, or Maybe you have had some kind of a bad thing happen that yeah. you can't let anybody know. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a performer, mm -hmm. because I know there's a lot of people watching that mm -hmm. are in acting, they're mm -hmm. in bands, mm -hmm. they're on TV, mm -hmm. they're all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. how, how do you keep yourself up when the circumstances are not up? Yeah, great question. Um, I think for my professional background, for doing, you know, for singing in the pop seen for a while we were trained to be very excellent mm -hmm. so the show goes on no matter what you smile and that's you know because it's performance space but when you're in church you, you don't do that anymore you know it's not like a show it's something that's real that um, that you want to honor God with um, and yes it still is excellent the way it should be but at this point it's it's more of God no matter what I'm going to worship you we were created to worship God so that should actually really come easily um, and really it's about him 
It's all about Him. I'm not here to perform for people. It's about God, and I hope that this worship will honor you, that this worship, worship will be a pleasing aroma, you know, for you, that you'll be pleased with this worship. And it doesn't matter if there's one or a thousand people, 20,000, for me, you're really worshiping to the audience of one, which is God. And I, I, like I said, I hope He is he, pleased with our worship. But, so. but your training in excellence yes. still carries into that, it, it right? It does, it does. And like, there are mornings I wake up and sometimes, you know, sometimes I just don't want to worship, you know, mm -hmm. but you just tell your mind. You tell your mind and you remember how good he is, how awesome he is, how he has saved me, you know. And, he, and, and then when you, when you tell your mind to worship, everything else will follow. Your heart will then follow to worship God. Those are the difficult moments, yeah. Um, and, and for me, really, regardless of what I feel, he's still worthy of worship. You know, he's and do you it. ever just make yourself get started and then it comes? Yeah, sometimes you just have to tell your mind and it'll come. But sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Let's, you know, fill the people with faith. You know, yes. you, when you sing, you declare what you're singing over the people. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they'll, you know, be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, how about like in your relationships? Yeah. What kind of challenges? Mm. <laughs> like when you were traveling all yes. that time all over the world? Yes. Could you have relationships in? Um, it was very hard to have relationships. You know, Betty, when I told you about the guy who, who brought me to Christ, remember mm -hmm. he was my college buddy. He was a Christian leader in church, and I ended up having a relationship with him. Oh. Yeah, and uh, we also got engaged, but our engagement was a really long engagement through my career. But he was very supportive, you know, and he was also a really good friend because I knew him since college. Um, but the challenge came when this man, um, a guy from a pastor rather came to our church and he um, gave me a word of God. And he basically said, and this is when I was engaged. I actually got engaged to this guy already. So this pastor comes in and he says, hey, you know, I have a word for you. God has your husband. He'll be a man of God, equally yoked with you. So don't jump ahead of God and produce an Ishmael. You know, Ishmael mm -hmm. is not God's promise. Uh -huh. You know, in the Bible, uh, that's in the Bible. Abraham, yeah, had a, Abraham had a son. Yes early yes and instead of waiting for Isaac he went ahead yes, right went ahead of God yeah so don't don't, don't jump ahead of God mm -hmm. basically and then I said he needs to wait on God's timing and I'm like okay hmm because my, my engagement with this guy was taking so long I was crying to God why, why if something would always hinder our plans to get married so you know I began to wonder what's going on so basically I put that relationship, I just surrendered it to God. I sought counsel from our, some of our pastors and they said, well, you know what? Maybe you should both grow in the Lord separately and not necessarily together. So, I, and, he, and they said, if it's gonna be you guys in the end, it'll be you guys in the end. And then I said, yeah, okay, that makes sense. You know, So we actually broke up. It wasn't the easiest thing. It was really hard. How do you break up with someone where you don't have any issues with, where you don't have a problem with? Mm -hmm. You know, but, but I knew it was something that I had to do and um, it's something that I felt that God was telling me to do. So we broke up and I totally had peace after that. It's hard, yeah, you cry after the disengagement, but the next day, like, there's peace. So therefore, this, for me, peace has always been that I am in God's will. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we kept the friendship, which is, which is great, but I, in those years, I always wondered, gosh, what am I gonna get married? Is it him, is it not? You know, um, for the longest time. And then um, the interesting thing was, I think a few years after that, uh, my friend had actually passed away. At the age of 37, he had a heart attack. And then I realized that, whoa, God, if I had married this man, I would have been a widow and my kids would have been fatherless. Mm. And, um, and it did not make sense all those years of me being single, why I had to end this relationship with him. But I realized now it did. I was really never to marry this person. And then you fast forward uh, down the years, um, you know, after my singing career and then um, now doing full time ministry, I actually uh, we go to these conferences. So I meet people from all over the world because our church is all over the world. There's every nation churches everywhere. So I, I, I finally met this pastor and uh, I would see him in the conferences and his name is uh, Pastor Busso from the Every Nation Church here in New York City. And then um, as God would have it, uh, I ended up marrying the guy, and now I'm here in New York. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm happy to be in New York. And, and I think, you know, the singing industry trained me to be excellent and gave me skill that I needed. But then I went into full-time ministry in the Philippines. So that was already training for me to be in full-time ministry and work with pastors. Now that I married Bruce, that has been great 
uh, now I am that that training has helped me to be able to minister in New York with my husband. With him. Yeah. And you look back to what the pastor said to you. What? Tell me again what he said. Um, God has your husband. He will be a man of God that will be equally yoked with you. So don't jump ahead of God and wait on God's timing. And so when you met Bruce, yes. he was equally yes. your he was your equal. Yes, he was. Well, great. I know. So amazing. It, but you know what, Betty? I remember all those nights when I'd be lonely. I said, God, you had a promise for me. I'm holding on to your promise. You said you have my husband. And then when I look at it now, if, even if I didn't understand why, you know, my fiance then passed away or even if I didn't understand when he did pass away, then I understood made sense like okay he wasn't meant to be the guy but now that I'm married to Bruce I realize this is it this is the man of God that he always had for me and I'm so glad I listened to now, him. Now how old were you when you married him? I was 40 <laughs> the See, big four zero. <laughs> I know but there's a lot of New York women that yeah. need to hear that yeah because a lot of women are 40 and right. going is he is it too late yeah. have, have I do I need to give up yeah. but you're saying no, no. No, you don't hold. You hold on to God's promises. And here's the wonderful thing: even when I was single, what I loved most was that I had moments where God would woo me. I would be driving in my car, and I would blush, it's like God, I just feel Your presence. And I know it's kind of weird, but like I, He was wooing me. He was, you know, courting me. He was showing me His love as a single person. I walk in the streets, and the wind would blow, and I would feel His love. So for me, those were wooing moments that even if I didn't have my husband, that God was there for me. Pouring His love out yes, on you. Yes, yes. Now, have you had any other challenges in your life as you've gone along that have been, that you could share with yeah. the people watching? Yeah, so, you know, lovely, I love married life with Bruce. It's been amazing to be able to, I, you know, I wake up every morning just so uh, happy, so in, it just so much enjoy that I get to do life with an amazing man of God. And he's fun. I mean, you know, I'm 40. When I got married to him, I'm, I was 40 and he was 50. Oh, wow. You know? um, but, uh, uh, he, you know, he's he's a treasure. I'm, I'm going to say this off the bat. He's actually a, known as the 50-year-old virgin. <laughs> <laughs> he is a 50-year-old virgin. They do exist. Um, but he's a gift. You know what I mean? And he may have been 50, but um, I'm glad I married at, at any, a later age because um, there's a maturity about him. I don't have any more headaches to deal with, you know, little issues that are mm -hmm. annoying, but because of his maturity, um, we, know, we know who we are, we know what we want, you know. Um, but he's fun, he's so fun to be with. Uh, and of course, when you get married, you know, you want to have, you want to build your family. So I think for the first two years, we just love doing ministry together. And then I think the third year we wanted to start trying to have kids and uh, it just wasn't happening, you know. And so we saw all the doctors and, and basically we did all the tests and they're really telling us, no, you're fine, you're actually good, you know, but still nothing is happening. And I, you know, we even uh, did the, the in vitro, not the in vitro, the in vivo. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I want to do the whole in vitro thing. It's just, it's not, I tried the first time around and I'm, I'm okay with it, but I don't know if I want to do it again. But, um, but I, but the thing is, you know, what the doctor says, we're fine. So at this point, even if the procedures didn't work, we're believing in God that we would have our very own kids, you know. And I'm at we're at this point where we're just so much at peace. He's healthy, I'm healthy. We've done all the tests, so let's just wait on God's timing again. Mm -hmm. He was faithful to me by bringing my husband at the right time, and I believe it'll be the same thing when it comes to kids. So it's just walking in peace and in faith, continued faith. Yes, and also mm -hmm. it kind of is correlated with the fact that you waited a long time to even find your mate. Yes. So maybe you're waiting to exactly the right time for children to come. Yes. Maybe there's a, an exact time. Right. And that's why you're at peace about yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And at the same time, you know, it's always been like a, a waiting period, waiting for my husband, waiting for the kids. But during those waiting moments, you don't waste time because you're, you know, I've always been working for God, you know, working for the church. And for me, it's never wasted when you pour your life into other people's lives. You know, um, time is never wasted. And um, again, it's also perfect timing. I believe it's going to happen at the right time. Yes. Okay. So now, do you intend to do more with your music? Oh uh, yes, I've actually started. Um, I'm I'm starting to. I've uh, attended a songwriting uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. So I've always just been singing, singing, and and working. But I think it's time to get to the creative side of it. So actually, my heart is to start writing my own music. But you have didn't you know that? Written? No, I didn't. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Have you written anything? 
my first song was a song for my mother on her 70th birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, and I really want to start writing for the Lord. I've had a lot of uh, encouraging words, you know, people praying over me, saying that you know there's there's songs to be brought forth. So mm -hmm. I think it's really just allotting time. Life can be busy, but you've got to really make time to to do those things. So And will you like get up early in the morning to do it or do you just be walking down the street and all of a sudden a song hits you and yeah. you write it down? Yeah, I haven't actually come to the point where I want to sit down and do it unless we have our song group meetings. That's when we allot time. We have like mm -hmm. song, a, a songwriters group that we do. Um, but other than that, sometimes it's just, you know when you sing in, in church mm -hmm. um, and there are moments where there's just that flowy moment where you just worship God. Songs are birthed out through that. Uh, sometimes when the pastor is doing the transition, I'm just singing in the background and I'm like, hey, that's a great song, <laughs> you know? So That um, you're hearing that you yes, can write. Yes, and then sometimes uh -huh. I'll, and then sometimes when I'm sleeping, I hear music and I, in the morning, I'm like, or when I'm dreaming, I hear songs. This is a hit. This is a, such a hit. I'll bring my, I'll bring my phone. Like I'll record it while I'm asleep. That, did you, do you do it? I do that. I do that. Now, so I've got bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Now it's just a, I got to find a way to connect them all. So well, yeah. Yeah, uh, because I speak or preach whatever you want to yeah. say, I've always laughed and said I'm like a country singer. <laughs> I can uh, hear a sermon, and I have to grab a napkin and write it right. down. One time, since I'm from Texas, Bill and I were driving in the pickup and it was dark and there was no light. And I'm like, quick, I gotta find a piece of paper. I've got this sermon, I've got this sermon. And because I seem to know mm. the exact three points or the exact verse mm. and how to bring it out. And I really feel like that's what, how the Lord does it with me. It, it doesn't have to be like people think it would be, mm -hmm. where you just sit down and mm -hmm. you have this formula mm -hmm. and you do your formula. Yeah. It's never worked like that right. for me. It's right. always been some idea that just comes into my head and I begin to develop it and have to grab a piece of paper. Yeah, whether it's a song, whether it's a thought, you gotta write it down because um, one, of the, one of the songwriters had shared to us that you gotta write everything down because just like, is it like birds or something? That it's just these ideas, they will fly away. <laughs> and you will not I remember them. I believe that. So you gotta write it down now. That's why I grabbed the napkins. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or the yep. back, uh, even on an airplane. I've <laughs> even done it on the back of a magazine or yeah. something. I really agree with that. And another thing I've done is like, if I get this idea, I write it in the, the notes on my iPhone. Great. And I just get the get it down, and then later I can develop it. Yes. So can you do that with a song? Yes, yes. Sometimes it's lyrics that you're just going to put in. Sometimes I'm reading the Word, and then I really, and then <laughs> the Bible has great ideas on lyrics. Um, um, you know, and then you just write that down. Things that just, you know, strike you, that, that have that impact in you, you know, mm -hmm. that meaning. Now, that when you write you. those down, do you do the music with it or just the words? Um, m m the melodies come first for me. Oh. And then the lyrics come. But there are times when I'm reading the word, I'm like, okay, this is good. There has to be a song that is made out of these verses. So it, it can go both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but most Have you played any of your songs for anyone? Um, not yet. No, just for my mom. Mm -hmm. Just just her song that uh -huh. we did for her 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 major her seventieth birthday. So, um, but like I said, our singing group we've we've just we're just starting to work on those things. So hopefully we'll, we'll start singing them for church. Well, if you were gonna give some wisdom to mm -hmm. the people watching, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know what you what kind of wisdom would you give somebody that's in the pop world, mm -hmm. and what as a Christian? Yeah. What what kind of wisdom would you give them? Mm -hmm. And then I would like to know what kind of wisdom would you give people who are in the world of worship mm. and how to move forward in it? So do you mind giving me the... Sure. Okay, okay. To answer your first question, uh -huh. you have to remind me about the second one. Okay. <laughs> the first one, for those who are in the pop world, you know, for me, um, it's the, every gift you have, I believe, is from God. And, um, and He'll never take that away from you. And for me, I want to be a good steward. I want to take care of this gift He's given to me. And I want to glorify Him with this gift. Yes, you can be trained in the most excellent way, but at the same time, God deserves even more than that. You know, He deserves our excellence as well. Um, and I think when you honor Him and put Him first in everything that you do, He's going to honor that and He's going to add everything else unto you. Mm -hmm. you know? Even in the pop world. Even in the pop world. Um, I, I, as, as a singer, I did not sing songs that were negative or that were, that didn't have nice lyrics. Mm -hmm. I chose, my other girlfriends, my friends, my groupmates, 
would, would sing that, I said, no, I'm not gonna sing. That's just not, I don't feel comfortable singing those songs and I didn't, you know? Um, and that's a stand I had to make, a personal thing. So I'd really leave the stage and let them sing and then I'd come back. Yeah, I would do that. So for me, it's, you know, you So have, there is a way to be a Christian yeah. in that world. Yes. And my manager knew that and, and the girls knew that. Um, and anyway, so I, I think if you honor God the right way, I believe he's also gonna, you know, um, bless you with your career. And he has blessed me with such a, a long career. And there wasn't one month where I didn't have a show or a gig, so he provided as well. And mm -hmm. I think it's really, really honoring God with your gift. Okay. Yeah. All right, and so now, give people watching mm -hmm. wisdom for being in ministry mm -hmm. and, and having a successful career there, if you wanna call it sure. that. Yes. Uh, what, what's what's your, your advice to them for that? Um, I, I think the, the word that when you're sharing me, when you're asking me that question, it's faithfulness. You have to be faithful with everything that's given to you. So with me, whether it was singing career, I tried to be faithful until the last day I sang in the industry. Um, and same thing with ministry. Every, op, every project, everything that was given to me, I have to be faithful with it, whether it's training new worship leaders and um, you know do, doing life with other people. Um, and then... Uh, and, and like I said, it was that, that period of waiting of being single, remember? Mm -hmm. I waited and I waited, but I was being faithful with everything that God gave me. Mm -hmm. Being involved with ministry, being faithful with that until God brought the right man in my life. You know, so I, th I think in ministry, just be faithful with what God has, has given you and He will bless you more abundantly than you could ever imagine mm -hmm. or believe or hope What for. kind of wisdom do you have for people who are training people? Ah, uh, <laughs> training people. Um, never to really, uh, to bring out the best in them. When you want to train people, don't ever think, oh, this is a new person and I'm intimidated or it's a threat, no. I think it's about uh, bringing the best you could possibly bring out in them, bring out their talents, bring out their skill and let them be better than you are. Train them to be better than you could ever be. Yeah, and so that's really an unselfish way to do it too, mm -hmm. isn't yeah. it? And, and you yes. don't lose you by don't doing lose. it the yeah. unselfish way. Yeah. You win, yeah. even though it feels like you mm -hmm. could lose, right? Yes. Well, yes. I really thank you for coming <laughs> on the show. This is it's so interesting. And I want to talk to you. I know that you've been listening. You've been thinking about it. You've been wondering, what's she all about? Is she for real? Is she genuine? And you can tell she is. And you can be a great success wherever you are. Did you hear her say everything she did? She did it because she wanted to thank God. She wanted to honor God. She actually wanted to worship Him with what she did, worship Him with her work. And you can do that. Thank you so much for tuning in. It wasn't an accident that you turned on the TV tonight. And I hope you received some great wisdom and that you have a really good rest of the night, whether you are going to sleep or you're going to work. I'll see you next time. Bye.